The Kerbal system contains various planets, some of which are quite exotic when compared to the planets in our own solar system. But it is time that we expand the system. The Outer Planets mod provides Kerbal Space Program with a lot more exploratory fun, which we will make use of. The original Kerbal system has a Jupiter counterpart that we all know, and this mod adds planets equivalent to Saturn, Neptune and Uranus. Today we will focus on one of the five moons of Sarnus, called Tikto. This moon is very interesting because of its obvious, thick and mysterious green atmosphere. But what is it made of? And what makes this world different from the others? And to answer these questions, I will be making use of my Python programming skills, which is something you can learn using Brilliant, who are so kind to sponsor this video today. Brilliant is where you learn by doing, with thousands of interactive lessons in maths, data analysis, programming and AI. Brilliant's first principles approach helps you build understanding from the ground up. Their method has been proven to be six times as effective as regular lecture videos. And Brilliant is about building up your critical thinking skills through problem solving. It helps you by developing a learning habit. Gone are the days of mindless scrolling. They have courses on, for example, Python, which is something that I especially love. You can get familiar with programming using a drag and drop editor. You will learn how to think like a programmer and build a strong foundation. So if you are interested in learning useful skills and building a strong knowledge base, this is for you. To try everything that Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash curious or click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off of an annual premium subscription. So we are going to take a look at this strange moon called Tecto. By the way, these visuals are from the volumetric clouds config by one salty Pringle in combination with Black Rack's mod. And this is what Tecto should look like without the clouds. Brother, uh. Before we move on to the juicy questions, here are some of the properties of the moon. The moon is a bit less than 10 times farther away from Sarnus than the extent of its rings. So the view is not as majestic as on Lathe when looking at Joule, but it's still pretty. This distance is also the reason why it will definitely not be torn apart by tidal forces. Tell me if you want me to make a video on the rings of the planets in this mod, or any other mods for that matter. The moon has a middle of the road size compared to the other rocky worlds. The ratio of the radii between the moon and Tecto is similar to that of our real moon and Titan. It is for that reason not a surprise that Tecto is a Titan equivalent in KSP. A moon with a thick atmosphere orbiting a planet with extensive rings. We can also take a look at the density of this moon. It is slightly denser than objects like the Mun, Minmus and Val. These worlds all have similar densities, though the Mun is obviously rocky, while Val is an icy moon. I expected Val to be significantly less dense, now that I think about it. It makes me believe that Val should have a big core and mantle. Tecto is even denser than these bodies mentioned before, so it is not as icy as Titan in our solar system, which has a very low density when compared to the Moon or Europa. Tecto does have a body of liquid on the surface, just like Titan. On the surface, temperatures seem to range from around 67 to 94 Kelvin. And is it just me? Or are these so-called maximum temperatures that are listed on the wiki pages pretty much always the ones you measure across the entire celestial body? Like where do you find this minimum temperature? Also note that this maximum temperature is the exact same as the one listed on Titan's wiki page. They are not very subtle as you might have noticed. Oh hey, who are you? Hello my fellow compatriot. I also checked if this temperature made sense using the thermal equilibrium equation and I got a temperature of about 85 Kelvin. And if you include the atmosphere that retains the heat much better, then I would say that Tecto does not have any strange activity going on to maintain that temperature, unlike Lace. So knowing these temperatures and seeing these liquids on the surface, what common substances find themselves in this range? Titan's lakes are made out of ethane and methane, which could also explain Tecto, I guess. Now I think I know what you all want to know. What is the atmosphere of this moon made of? To determine this, I'm going to employ an approach that I used in a previous video. 
By solving the hydrostatic equilibrium equation, we found a variable called the scale height, which depends on something we call the mean molecular weight. This number indicates the average number of protons and neutrons of molecules in the atmosphere in question. We need this scale height to describe how the pressure drops as you increase in altitude. So, if we measure the pressure for various altitudes, we can make a fit in Python, which you can learn using Brilliant, to calculate the correct value of the mean molecular weight. Now, the last time I did this, some of you pointed out that this gravitational acceleration, in the case of Ksp sized bodies, changes a lot more with altitude than in real life. And so, some of you suggested that I compensate for that. To do that, we need to introduce the altitude dependent gravitational acceleration. From there, we can integrate both sides of this expression. This looks a bit more complicated, as we suddenly do not have the definition of the scale height here anymore, but as the mean molecular weight is still there, we can just calculate it directly. And this is why I use Python. I put my measurements from the game into arrays, define the functions that describe the curves that depend on the variable that we want to find, either the scale height or the mean molecular weight, and we use the curve fit library to run a little algorithm. This will give us the values of these variables that would result in the best fit. So, do these two methods vary in any way? Well, I tried both the simpler method and the new method, and it did not result in any major differences regarding the mean molecular weights that I got. I also calculated the reduced chi-squared values for these fits, which is an indication of how well these fit. Close to one means better, and these indicated that the simpler method also fit the data better, which is kind of interesting. Others also noted how the temperature changes throughout the atmosphere of celestial bodies, but as the supposedly more accurate method presented earlier did not help, I don't think introducing another variable will help. We can also see from the fits that this line already looks pretty good, so I think this is as accurate as we can get. Now that we know the mean molecular weight of Tecto's atmosphere, what does this tell us? Well, as it turns out, it is very similar to that of Kerbin. The wiki states that there is no oxygen, so the more likely heavy molecule that we have could be CO2 in combination with another molecule. Or so, that is what you would think, but in these conditions CO2 would actually become a solid, so that eliminates that possibility. Check out these other molecules around the same molecular weight. Argon could technically be a gas in this atmosphere when you look at this phasing diagram, and it has a similar molecular weight. But in my opinion, it is way too rare to form an entire atmosphere for this moon. This is another confirmation of how KSP is made to be fun and practical, not accurate. But it is fun to think about the possibilities. I have not taken a detailed look at all the possible molecules, so feel free to take a look around and post your ideas down below. I would love to read them. For now, bye bye.